A few different times on this channel, I've talked about deja vu. That's the sensation of doing something you've done before. A few different times on this channel, I've talked about deja vu. That's the sensation of doing something you've done before. Well, here I am looking at a Prime One Studio statue of someone fighting giant dragons or snakes. Hmm. One could argue that's not deja vu. Smart business. Hey, it worked before. As the Extreme channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Thanks for tuning into the Extreme channel. My name is Mr. X. Today we are looking at Prime One Studios' one-third scale Wonder Woman vs. Hydra statue. So, you know, Wonder Woman has become really, really popular over the last decade, mainly due to Gal Gadot in the theaters. And I'm a big fan of her. I have this video right here where I have tons of different Gal Gadot statues, but I didn't have a comic version in the one-third scale. So my wife said to me as I was unboxing her the other day, she's like, why do you need another Wonder Woman statue? And I was like, you know, I only have, I don't know, but I still have one more on order. I have J&D's Gal Gadot movie version. I was never a huge fan of Wonder Woman within the comics. Although recently I did like Dark Knight Metal storyline. I remember when I saw this statue at the Prime One Studio Showcase event. This is a Fabot concept, that's the artist. I absolutely loved it. And I thought this would look fantastic with all of my other one-third scale DC comic statues. So particularly, I'm actually going to put her next to Superman Hush, right here, and then Batman Hush. While Hush is a different storyline, kind of getting the main trio of characters from the DC Universe together I think would look awesome. If you want to see what that looks like, make sure to check out the Extreme Channel social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter. The link for that is in the description below. So while they may have copied this concept, it's still pretty cool. And I'm not going to take into the fact that, yeah, this is kind of a regurgitation of something they've done two other times, because again, it was kind of an original concept from Faybach, and he didn't work on those other two statues, to my knowledge at least. But let's start. So normally I don't like a museum style base. I do like this one. There's some Themyscirian symbols or writing right on the bottom. I know it's kind of hard to see in the reflection with the bright lights with the Wonder Woman logo on the top of that and the gold trim around it. Like I said, normally I don't like that, but for some reason I think it works here. Then you start the real angst of the statue. It's this large, rock dirt platform and on it is a three-headed hydra now they didn't completely show you the hydra so there's only one foot you're not sure where the heads all connect there's no body well i understand they did that to save space so from a design standpoint it's smart and i appreciate it it's kind of weird in the concept in my opinion although this is a very dynamic statue so you have one hydra with its head cut off one coming down with battle damage the other one going up Diana's leg, ready to strike her, and she is in a very dynamic, fluid motion stance here with a little bit of a twist on her traditional armor. You see the lasso of truth. Her arm is about to strike, holding the sword of Athena. Her hair is flowing everywhere, and I really like what they did with her hair. We're going to look at that later. And then, of course, her traditional gauntlets and her shield on the other side. So super dynamic, a lot going on, very action-packed. I just think there's two misses, and one of it is the one you saw at the end. Her facial expression is bored. It's bored. So I think they should have put some grittiness. There's only one portrait with this, maybe with her baring her teeth or screaming, but she looks bored. Now, I understand she's a demigod. I assume this is a badass Hydra. Otherwise, she wouldn't have to be fighting it. Some lowly person could. So it doesn't really show her exerting energy other than the pose. And then, of course, like I said, I don't like the concept that you can only see part of the Hydra and it's kind of weird like that. So I think it's a four out of five still because it's way above average. They went pretty elaborate and you have to give them props for that. I also think when it comes to design, the more elaborate they try and make it, the more you have to give them a little bit of credit, which we're certainly going to do after the unboxing and assembly. These giant boxes are just out of control. Two boxes for this one. Standard custom foam. Everything was packed well. One just had the base and a ton of small pieces in it. The, 
The other one had Diana Prince. Now, her hair had so much white shit all over it that it wouldn't come off either. Probably took 30 minutes to scrape it all off. Let's measure her. Now the base itself is probably about 18 inches. And of course you can see like uh, the hydra sticks out a little bit on the side to give it three or four more inches. Uh, maybe a little bit in the front. For exact dimensions, check out Comic Concepts website. They carry Prime One Studio, Sideshow, Queen Studio, Infinity Studio, tons of statues from all different statue companies. The height is almost 32 inches. That's really, really tall, but typical for a one-third scale statue. Now, as you saw during the assembly, it was not an easy assembly. While nothing was broken and everything fit in, there is one pretty big issue, I would say, is the way her hair sits on her head leaves a bald spot right at the front here. So there are four different pieces for her hair. They're not flush, and that could be user error, but I don't think it is but I love how they sculpted the hair. So again, I'm not gonna hold them too accountable for that because look what they did. It looks absolutely amazing. Looks like it's almost mixed media. The only mixed media part or fabric part is the actual Lasso of Truth. We'll talk a little bit more about that in Paint and Sculpt. Now, this is the collector's edition. So they made three versions of it. What you see is what you get right here. So there's no other switch outs. Now, there are some arm switch outs for other versions you could have bought. So I have the Sword of Athena, which to me is her trademark weapon. It even has the W in the hilt where it meets the blade. This is the one I was going to use no matter what. So I figured, you know what, this one's a little bit cheaper, easier to get. The exclusive version had a switch out axe instead of the sword. So I didn't get that. And I wasn't a huge fan of it. Then the exclusive bonus version had a spear, which I think looks really cool, but again, it doesn't make sense because she just cut a head off a of Hydra. You really wouldn't do that with a spear. You'd probably do it with her trademark sword. And we'll talk more about pricing and value later. But really, that's it. It's an extremely heavy piece. I think she's going to display really well. Now, I have about 20 other one-third scale DC comic pieces she's going with. So if you want to see what that new display looks like, we're doing a room tour in the next month. So make sure you've not only liked this video, but you sub to the channel and hit that bell notification so you don't miss it. But I love how dynamic they made it. Everything fit in really well. So the Hydra keyed into here. She keyed into uh, the Hydra in two different parts. And it was pretty smooth. So despite the issue with the hair, I think it's still a 4 out of 5 on design. Again, if they offered different portrait displays, I think that could have taken it next level. Now here is the paint and sculpt. And they did a really good job other than some portrait concerns. So you have to remember I have some pretty bright lights shining on her right now. And not only that, but they clearly used a translucent resin for the skin. So it's giving it a little bit of effect I don't like uh, regarding her skin, especially in her portrait. I probably think her portrait, while it's not weak, I would say it's the weakest part of the statue. The decals look a little uh, cheap in the eyes. And then I wish that there was more um, separation in the actual eyebrows. Looks like they were just kind of painted on there. I think that's a huge miss in my opinion. And then along with the expression that we were talking about. But otherwise, the uh, skin looks good. Like I said, they use a translucent resin. Some people pref uh, uh, prefer that. I'm not a huge fan. I think 
The anatomy is fantastic of what you can see. They didn't make her too over muscularized, but she's very fit. I love the outfit. I think it does a great job. The colors popping uh, from the really uh, metallic reds, kind of this Iron Man vibe, then even the reds on her boot right here. A little bit different color, and you can tell it's a different material, not necessarily the armor, but more of a leather type material going all the way down with the gold plating on top. Looks really, really good. Her skirt or dress here, again, the way they made it flow looks absolutely fantastic. The detail in the stitching is phenomenal. And then her hair, of course, absolutely amazing. They did a nice job the way it's flowing. I mean, really gives so much dynamic aspect to the statue. So the individual strands, and you can tell if you look close enough, there is some brown in there, some subtle brown they added, which I think is pretty cool. Her gauntlets, traditional Wonder Woman gauntlets, I think look great. The color's a little bit different, but again, this is uh, that I'm used to, but this is Faybox interpretation. And even her crown up here. The sword looks great. It is not metal, it's painted polystone, but I think they chose a great silver uh, tint to it along with the fresh blood to really give it a realistic feeling. The mixed media on the lasso is fine. Uh, I think I would definitely prefer mixed media, but every, you know, what's great about this is when you see it with the dress, it all looks like it's mixed media, but just the actual lasso is. So on Wonder Woman herself, pretty great job. Even the detail in the hands, that's where I think translucent resin looks really good. Looks like real skin. Here's her trademark shield. Not too bright, a few uh, battle scarring here. So a lot of detail along with uh, uh, Themyscirin writing, which you'll also see on the base. It matches that down here, or symbols, I should say. But of course, a really big part of this statue is the Hydra, who looks amazing. They used a wet effect around the mouth to uh, really give it that saliva, and his saliva is actually purple, which is kind of weird, kind of different. I, I probably wouldn't have gone that direction. I would have used more of a translucent uh, purple, but that's what they chose. And you see it dripping off his teeth, the inside his mouth here, all the pinks and purples they used to really highlight it. And it looks like it continues to go down his throat, looks, which looks great. But yeah, I love the portrait of all these hydras. Looks absolutely great. And then they really supplemented it with this amazing battle damage. I mean, look how deep those cuts are. I think they picked the perfect color of red for blood to insinuate it just happened, along with the head chopped off down here and the guts on the inside. Very clean chop, so you know it was uh, quick. Here is the crocodile-like foot, the only foot we can see, like we talked about, a little weird with concept. I still have a bunch of white stuff to clean up there. But it looks good, very reptilian, alligator-like. Huge nails. The skin of the Hydra looks great. Not only the armor plates on the top that are a mix between green and blue, but the underside of the belly, very snake-like. That reminds me so much of snake skin right there. The rock that she's on, you can only see a little bit, but looks absolutely great. Looks like a real lot rock, the way they sculpted in the ridge lines to it and the different colors, really cool. Well, you wouldn't see this part of the statue here on the back. Detail of the fallen head. And again, I love the skin tone. I love the texture of it. Two boards, one actually slicing through. I think this looks really cool. Completely covered in blood, so you can insinuate it fell on top of that board. And then a, a, a clean one right here. Or a post, I should say, not a board. Yeah, so just really amazing job. Few things on her portrait, I think, are the only really things that aren't world class. And I think the farther you get away, again, the lights are shining on it, the less you see of those. I'm gonna go with the paint first. Despite the decals on the eyes, I think that's really the only big negative here. I think the paint's a five out of five. I am really, really impressed. While translucent skin isn't my thing, I think it does look good with this, gives it that soft feminine touch while she's still a badass warrior. Sculpt, 
absolutely amazing. Portrait could have been a little better. That was it. Everything else. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 simply for the fact that I think the portrait is one of the most important parts. So I think that does knock it down a grade. But 4 out of 5 is still a very high score. All right, so when it comes to value, is she worth it? This is a tough one. There are a lot of one-third scale Wonder Woman statues out there, both movie and comic and different versions, and I've always been looking for the right one, and I think this is the right one, particularly the comic. Like I said, I own a few other in the movie version, but I don't know how many they made, so I can tell you they made 300 of these and 800 that had both the spear and the axe, but, but they don't list how many of the one with just the axe that they made. Retailed right around $1,500. Again, I went with Comic Concepts. I went with the Collector's Edition. That's a little bit cheaper. And then Comic Concepts is typically cheaper than everybody else when it comes to Prime One Studio. Plus, they have the cheapest shipping rates and fantastic customer service. There's a link where it says where to buy statues in the description of this video. It's not an affiliate link for Comic Concepts. You can click on it and check out what they have. But a big thank you to them. I really appreciate it. You see, I've been peddling their name a lot because they've been delivering me so many great Prime One Studio statues and I really appreciate it. So this is still available, which tells me that the demand isn't super high despite how awesome it is. So if I think about it, could I get my money back? Yeah, once this sells out, I probably could, but they're gonna continue to make Wonder Woman statues too. And it seems like one of the few characters that the movie version is just as popular as the comic version. So I think the value is a three out of five. I think you could probably get your money back, which again, and I've done many videos in the past on whether you should consider that in a decision or not. I don't think you should, but I do always want to rate the values. Now, does this have the X factor? So X factor is, is this awesome? Is it badass? Do you really like it? Are you drawn to it? Absolutely. I think this does have the X factor. I think it's a five out of five statue. It's really impressive. The dynamic pose, the dragon is absolutely crazy. Sorry, Hydra. And let's be honest, she cut off one head. I don't know why she did that because when you cut one head off a of Hydra, did you just say that out loud? If you did, it's kind of weird. We will be giving all of these statues away plus additional ones at every 5,000 subscriber milestone. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. I really appreciate everyone tuning in. Now I gotta move this. That's always the worst part of these because I don't wanna take it apart. So give me a like just for that. I would appreciate it. But I hope you're doing well. Take care of yourself. And again, make sure to check out Comic Concepts. Talk to you soon.